Hey guys, Stock Saturday, and I've got a cold again, somehow, it seems to be uh, loads of it going around, but whatever. Uh, but it's a huge green week, so that makes up for it. Uh, I'm 15% up for the week, which is very nice. Uh, S&P's up, from the looks of it, about 1.3%. Uh, Nasdaq up one8 Eight, I think so yeah very very nice um, I'm not gonna lie and uh, say most of this uh, hasn't come from clean spark so uh, yeah that's the one sort of doing the business but we've had some other gainers here as well uh, Stellantis sort of up about seven uh, percent from the looks of it uh, Broadcom up uh, about five percent that's still sort of riding pretty high and he's competing with um, with clean spark for sort of top gainer uh, this doesn't include the fx impact and everything uh, it's about 217 percent green i think uh, clean spark is a bit more than that now uh, tsmc is up about 13 percent for the week uh, sort of catching up on some of the other uh, semiconductors so pretty good um but not a lot of uh, other gainers elsewhere sort of the miners are Struggling a little, uh, Glencore below uh, four pound again now, so that's not too good. Uh, even Hymax sort of not um, not following the trend uh, of semiconductors, so yeah, not too bad. But um, yeah, we'll have a look at some earnings. Or oh, just before the earnings, um, we have had TSMC's uh, monthly revenue for January, which looks pretty good, uh, two hundred and fifteen billion. Uh, Taiwan dollars, so that's up 8% year on year, or 7.9%. Last sort of couple of months of 2023 were, uh, you know, 206 for November and 176 for December, so good to see uh, a reasonable number, and up year on year, which is very nice. So we'll see uh, what comes of uh, the rest of 2024. Uh, obviously, AI hype and uh, all manner of things sort of uh, going into um tsmc now evs um you know wearables and that sort of thing you've got the apple vision pro come out and uh, that'll need chips as well uh, i haven't sort of uh, got 100 percent confirmation but i would imagine they're putting a, a tsmc chip in there because they seem to use uh, them exclusively so yeah really uh, really positive for tsmc as long as uh, china don't invade uh, which I really don't see as a high probability. Um, I think people are likening it to the um, Russian invasion, and I just think China are a little bit more uh, smart than that, to be honest. That also has an effect on HiMax uh, in Taiwan, of course, uh, and one of my larger positions, uh, certainly on the options as well. I'm looking for a sort of decent um, couple of years from HiMax, and they have their... Q4 uh, earnings out, uh, EPS and revenue both beat guidance, um, gross margin sort of in line with guidance, uh, it's still uh, a little bit of a, a decrease, 4.5% uh, decrease on revenue, uh, they were expecting a 5 to 5 to 11% decrease in revenue, so that's pretty good, uh, gross margin at 30%, and after tax profit, uh, 23 million, so not too bad at all um 11.2 million uh, last quarter so 23 million uh, decent profit but they have said uh, q1 they're sort of anticipating a, uh, a slightly slower quarter and sort of companies ordering or an uncertain quarter they've said uh, companies are ordering sort of uh, things just in time so they're a bit uh, uncertain as to what orders will come in um, obviously they've had january already and they're saying it's okay but revenues to decline nine to sixteen percent uh, quarter on quarter hopefully they'll uh, they'll beat that they might be just saying it's uh, an uncertain quarter um profit will be two to five cents where uh, this uh, this quarter uh, q4 was 13.5 cents so that is quite low but I do think there's uh, positives sort of looking forward. They're saying automotive is doing really well. Uh, Wise Eye AI, their sort of laptop eye tracking technology, pretty good. They're also in mass production for Geely Autos uh, EV production in uh, Q3 2023. So um, that should be uh, providing a decent bit of revenue going forward. Uh, Geely, sort of one of the 
the bigger conglomerates in um, China. I think they were they spun off um, Polestar and uh, that sort of Volvo as well, and sort of a number of number of other companies. Yeah, it's not uh, not ideal overall. Been sort of uh, saying uh, last few quarters that it's uh, very much a next quarter or the quarter after next company. Uh, they sort of you know release their guidance and say yeah it's not great and next quarter is going to be um, not all that great, but the quarter after that will be you know lovely. And then you know next earnings, it's oh we're still a little bit unsure next quarter, and do we just see keep going through this? Uh, you know, continuous rigmarole, but I'm hoping sort of next couple of years, uh, this partly sort of China having a bit of a downturn as well. They do a lot of business in China and sort of China are uh, struggling a bit, but I think going to be introducing some rather large stimulus. So that should bode well. And just looking at their figures uh, in a little bit more detail, the uh, profit figure that they've given does look to be partly due to a, an income tax um, benefit. So that's not really uh, one to take too much into account. You'd sort of look at profit uh, before tax at sort of uh, just under 12 million uh, in um, September quarter uh, this year, 15 million this year, uh, this quarter. So that's a slight increase, not quite as much as sort of they were reporting, um, and it was 39 million last year in um, the Q4 last year, so it's way down. But we're hoping to sort of get back on track uh, the next year or two. My um, options bets are sort of January uh, 2026, so still a way to go on that, and it doesn't really have to rise all that much for for those to come good. Um, they're at sort of ten dollar. Uh, strike so it's already down to 550 now so i think to get back to ten dollars in uh, a couple of years wouldn't be all that difficult and they were at sort of 15 16 dollars at the highs so um if they can get a bit of uh, profit going with evs then i think they can easily get back there so we'll see uh balance sheet wise cash is uh up from last quarter uh, down on last year but uh, yeah 191 million not too bad uh, inventories down as well so that's pretty good they're saying inventories are at a a fairly normal level now uh, so it's 370 million last year uh, down to sort of 259 previous quarter and now 217 million so that's uh, that's pretty good they do still have the uh, debt to, I'm guessing, refinance, uh, short-term debt at $453 million, um, same as last quarter. Yeah, and they've got long-term uh, unsecured borrowing at $34 million. so that's come down slightly from uh, last quarter, but it's sort of a fairly big debt pile overall. Just looking at their presentation as well, they sort of highlight uh, a few bits and pieces. Uh, auto sales were over 45% of the total revenue uh, for Q4, so that's pretty good. Uh, it was 50% uh, year-on-year growth for auto sales, so that's good. I'm sure we'll see EVs sort of continuing to uh, do well, and especially in uh, China, where they've sort of had a, a bit of a struggle the last year but they're still the uh, biggest market and i think still the biggest growing market so yeah that's looking good to be uh, in china and they have noted that uh, q1 is sort of often a bit um, sluggish compared to the rest of the year because they do have uh, lunar new year in uh, china so they would normally uh, expect q1 to be a bit poor um, but this is sort of a little uh, worse than normal um, and they do have their uh, next chip partnership um, an automotive partnership that they made in the last quarter so very nice chinese company and uh, yeah we'll have to see if they can sort of participate in this uh, stimulus coming forward and then we have clean spark so big gainer for the week uh, it's up uh, about 68 percent so very very nice not something you see in most companies but that is uh, the way of crypto and a sort of leverage bet on crypto especially uh, i think this is sort of partly due to the earnings it's not just crypto uh, going up although it has uh, had a good week so we'll see that uh, tomorrow as well in the crypto video but 
yeah, Clean Spark have had sort of uh, a couple of bits of news uh, as well as the earnings. They've uh, made two acquisitions. So um, the uh, 20x hash was always uh, pending them sort of getting a a facility to put the cards in, and they've acquired three uh, facilities in Mississippi for a cash payment of 19.8 million dollars. So expected to close within 21 days and uh, operating hash rate at the combined facilities uh, expected to get 2.4x hash so not really uh, a huge sort of facility but uh, or set of facilities but it's a bit of geographic diversification which is quite nice and uh, the construction of a facility in Dalton um, for a cash payment of 3.4 million they expect to invest another 3.5 million to complete the project and uh, target operational um, hash rate of 0.8x hash in April 2024. Um, they already do uh, 0.8 at uh, campus in Dalton and uh, they're expanding that to uh, another 0.8. So that'll be 2.4 um, in total in Dalton. So 2.4 in Dalton, 2.4 in Mississippi. And uh, obviously the Sandersville um, expansion expected to go live sort of in the next month or so. And they have also said they expect to pay for the acquisitions with cash on hand. So that's uh, very nice. They should be sort of mining at a, a reasonable profit, I would be hoping, um, with sort of today's prices, even though uh, difficulty and hash rate have gone up. Um, but yeah, hopefully not uh, too much dilution. There'll still be a fair bit of dilution obviously for uh, purchasing the, the new miners and the uh, dreaded stock-based compensation, but that's just the way it is. Uh, that is to get them to sort of certainly uh, 32x hash, but also potentially uh, 50 if uh, the bull market sort of provides some uh, reasonable, uh, reasonable cash to do that. Um, so, yeah, they give this little table as well. So they're in sort of Dalton, Mississippi, Sandersville, uh, Washington, and they sort of have some joint locations as well. Um, and, yeah, looking to get to 20. So they will have to obviously uh, buy some more facilities or uh, build facilities for uh, to go from 20 to uh, 32. But, um, yeah, good a uh, good little announcement. And they released their first uh, quarter, well, Q, we would call it Q4 calendar year um, earnings, which was uh, pretty good overall. Um, they had sort of said, uh, aside from the financials, that they are now at 12.5 exahash. So some of the uh, miners are getting energised and switched on. That's very nice. So we don't really need to uh, look at too much of the asset side because this is uh, kind of already out of date. Uh, this is, you know, balance sheet as of December the 31st, but we've already had the uh, January update. Uh, so this is a little bit out of date. Uh, Bitcoin will be sort of worth a, a decent amount more um, at the moment. Just sort of, uh, I think they had 3,500 and we're up to sort of $47,000 now. So $164 million in Bitcoin. That's uh, rather nice. So just sort of coming down to their uh, balance sheet side, as I say, uh, they don't really give the cash in the um, operational updates. So 48 million in cash. That's not too bad. They'll be uh, spending some of that, as they're saying, on um, acquisitions, which is good. Uh, property, plant and equipment is obviously up uh, through their continued building. That's good. Um, and debts are still very, very low. Um, current debt up to 7.4 million. Quite low considering the uh, cash and Bitcoin available. And uh, long term debt at 7 million. So that's down from 8.9 uh, last year. Uh, last quarter, rather. What they haven't done, uh, as far as I can see, is given us the updated um, shares outstanding as of. Um, the earnings date, which they did before, uh, not quite sure why they haven't done this. So the uh, shares outstanding figure that we've got is as of December. Uh, not ideal, but yeah, that's uh, that's what we've got. So uh, it's 185 million uh, shares out shares issued. But yeah, we'd prefer if they uh, sort of gave it right up to date. 
um, Bitcoin mining revenue, so the uh, income statement, uh, obviously mining revenue is up considering the uh, hash rate is much, much higher than uh, the Q4 last year. Uh, 73 million cost of revenues is not quite up uh, as much as I thought it would be uh, 29 million I have to uh, plug all of this into my model and so we'll see where we are um, press professional fees have come down um, considering sort of uh, acquisitions and uh, Sandersville and all sorts of things I kind of thought professional fees would be up um, payroll expenses are up uh, about 50% so that's not too bad considering hash rate has uh, doubled and we'll see sort of where this goes once they're at uh, 20x hash um, general and admin sort of up uh, similarly about 40 percent um, a little bit of sort of loss and then gain on fair value of bitcoin uh, that's where sort of most of this um, this uh, profit has come from so they're actually turning a net profit uh, that is sort of uh, the big, big news, I think, has sort of driven them up. It's uh, no longer uh, loss making, although I don't really think, you know, it's they're showing 20, uh, 25.9 million um, net profit. But it was 36 million uh, gain of uh, fair value of Bitcoin. So I don't really count that. So I'm not going to call it a net profit. But similarly, I wasn't calling it a loss um, before when... Uh, it was just sort of Bitcoin going down and uh, and sort of depreciation um, as well. Depreciation is a bit of a a uh, up and up and down one for some people. Um, you know, they're sort of depreciating the assets quite fast so that they can uh, then you know be showing a profit and uh, also uh, the miners I guess run out quicker than uh, other assets would but some of this depreciation will be the buildings as well so it's a little bit difficult to forecast uh, depreciation really but it's it's up um 50 percent so no surprise there i'll have to see sort of what comes really in the um april to june quarter i don't think um the next quarter is going to be all that helpful because the sandersville uh, expansion is going live mid-quarter so, yeah, you might have sort of a load of one-off costs where it first gets going. I think uh, Q April to uh, June Q2 will be um, a little bit more indicative. But yeah, overall, people still... Uh, but yeah, overall, people seem to be loving this. Uh, just the sort of... Um, on the... before. But yeah, overall, people seem to be loving this. Uh, people that don't look too deeply into the numbers will just see, you know, reported a net profit. That sounds good, um, even if it is for sort of balance sheet issues. And maybe I do need to uh, reconsider my model to sort of allow for that more, uh, you know, more prominently because I don't really consider it profit. But if the rest of the market does, then that's what you have to focus on, I suppose. So economic news, there wasn't a lot really this week. Uh, you did have the ISM figures uh, was sort of um, expected to be um, OK, uh, depending on which one. Non-manufacturing employment uh, up from 43.8 was expected to be just under 50. It was just over 50. So that's quite good. And then non-manufacturing PMI, that's sort of the, uh, I always call it the bellwether of the US economy because they're not really a manufacturing uh, nation anymore. This is their sort of businesses outlook for the country. That was uh, expected to be 52, that's 53.4. So that's suggesting quite a, a positive outlook for the US. Uh, above 50 is positive. And non-manufacturing prices, uh, so people... Sort of buying stuff and uh, paying more money for uh, investing in their own business at 64 so it was already high it was expected to still be high but slightly come down a bit and it smashed through so uh, market seemed to be sort of really really happy with that um uk house price index it would be baffling um 1.3 percent on from halifax in uh, in January, which January you'd normally think uh, winter time, people aren't moving, or Christmas time as well, just post Christmas uh, isn't exactly the time people want to be moving house. So 
you know, you're not going to be going around looking at houses sort of in December, you wouldn't have thought. So, yeah, to see that up was a little bit strange. Up uh, the year on year um, increase is up from last month even. So that's very strong, very uh, unusual. And then that was pretty much it. So portfolio for the week, as I say, uh, some reasonable gainers in the invest account. And then obviously a uh, huge gainer is CleanSpark. Uh, the gold and silver miners haven't been doing uh, particularly well at all. Um, not really adding anything uh, in this uh, in this ISO. I'd have to be obviously selling something to add because it's pretty much full. Um, waiting for April to be able to sort of make some changes. Um, REITs sort of not doing all that well. Uh, languishing sort of at some low prices. Stag's doing okay, but Beachy sort of coming below uh, below 30. Uh, Tritax Eurobox back down below 50p. Um, but not a huge sort of problem there, and they're sort of small positions until I uh, get out of crypto, basically. Um, but yeah, gold and silver sort of struggling a little, and clean spark smashing it. Um, and Pan American silver struggling sort of similarly. Uh, KGHM sort of down at uh, 108. Not too bad. It's a seven percent loss, but I'm still uh, really positive on them, especially the sort of huge silver side, which I still think is going uh, rather unnoticed. And then the invest account is still where, where all of my money's going. Uh, Chinese tech sort of not uh, not doing all that well. Slightly positive day on Friday, but still uh, languishing around the lows with China's economy sort of going down the pan. Um, but then options uh, have done pretty well for the week. Uh, gold and silver sort of coming back a little. Um, gold and silver ones sort of coming down slightly, um, adding uh, a little bit during this week, adding a little bit more Equinox. So 170 contracts now. Um, some of about 25 of those, I think, are for um, the end of this year or sort of January 25, I think. Uh, but most of those, I think 140 of them, uh, are January 26. So really, really um, sort of bullish on those for the next sort of two years. Um, Kua Mining as well. And I added a little bit more Hymax. Um, still sort of unsure as to whether it will get there in the next two years, but the sort of risk reward, I think, is really high on those. Um, Fortuna sort of becoming a very small position now, not really one that I'm um, adding to, although I do think they'll potentially do better this year than um, Equinox and Kerr Mining because they're already sort of uh, quite heavily mining uh, profitably with their new mine, Segela. So, yeah, hoping sort of this uh, this quarter and the next quarter's uh, earnings coming up should, should give them a nice push, but sort of longer term they're... Uh, less bullish for me i may sort of um get out of them and switch into uh equinox or court or something else uh, and the little desktop metal one sort of uh, hasn't really uh hasn't really moved it's come down slightly and i'm sort of not doing anything with that but i did make some changes to clean spark so it's sort of showing uh, seven and a half thousand but eight contracts i did have 11 um i decided to sort of de-risk a little i had some at sort of uh, a 15 dollar strike price which um you know my model uh, if you look watch my last video uh 15 sort of in some um some scenarios could be sort of considered quite a high price so uh to be having options you know uh, betting on it going way above 15 dollars is still a little bit risky and we're sort of able to get a um, similar risk reward price really on um, actually a two and a half dollar strike which seems a little bit crazy considering it's uh, 14 dollars but yeah that just gives me a little bit more uh, safety while sort of still getting a nice gain if they do well and obviously the uh, the main position in the ISA is really uh, where I want to be on clean spark and sort of options wise um, I'm actually sort of less focused on clean spark and more on the the gold and silver uh, sort of just the risk reward on um, gold and silver ones seems to be far far higher um, clean spark isn't actually that much um, you know that much more than the stock itself sort of if the stock does a 
you know a 3x from here the options might do sort of five or six x whereas you know equinox for example uh, if equinox does a, a 4x then the options would do sort of close to 20 and even more so on high max so yeah i'm uh, on the option side i'm more focused on equinox core and high max basically even if uh, equinox is even if uh, Clean Spark obviously is the uh, big runaway performer at the moment, so it's uh, it's not really 40, uh, 45 percent in the green because I have sold a load and uh, bought sort of a huge amount new um, new contracts this week. It's actually sort of getting on for five hundred percent green on uh, on the Clean Spark options, but yeah, maybe I'll. Uh, take a bit of profit at some point and potentially buy even more uh, gold and silver ones that could be uh, throwing money into a black hole i'm sure but that's uh, where my sort of bullish theory lies so we'll see um that's portfolio for the week uh leave your thoughts in the comments below what you're uh, what you're buying if you're sort of running enjoying this run up on 5000 on the S&P and uh, way up um, way up all time highs on the Nasdaq so yeah leave your thoughts and comments below and uh, like and subscribe see you soon